All right, I have recorded this video about 200 times. Um, and we're just gonna get, we're just gonna start. I don't even wanna, yeah. So first I'm gonna start off with like and sub, use my links in the description, um, save money on lethal gaming gear orders, follow my Twitter, add a sync, all that. First I'm gonna start off with the shape because um, it's just something simple to get through. It's the Viper Ultimate shape, everybody knows it. Modified FK1 basically, long, medium sized mouse that does and that basically has no hump. Um, I have like about 18 centimeter hands. I can grip it fine. Claw grip, I is what I use with it. Um, but getting into the mouse, and also, I there will be a point where I clear up a lot of the pricing things and stuff like that because some people don't want to look at how the facts actually are. Uh, so we will talk about that when we get to the price. So in the box, what you get is some grips. You get a color matching, which is good attention to detail, dongle, extender, and cable. That is good attention to detail. Not a lot of companies do that. And the grips are fine. They're nothing special. I'm not even going to show them off. Um, if you're going to use grips on a mouse, these are fine. But, I mean, when grips come out for the V2 Pro, I, I would just pick up some, some aftermarket grips, like BTL grips or something like that. Um, but specs of this mouse, 3950 sensor, which is a Razer exclusive. Third gen optical switches, 58 grams, and uh, they did round the feet. And USB C, which I mean, personally, I don't care about. Um, does it make it more convenient? Yeah, but I personally, it doesn't really benefit me, um, but it might benefit someone else. But I don't think it's something make or break, really, comparing it to something like the Super Light or Starlight. We're going to get into a sound test now. Right and left click. Side buttons. Scroll wheel. All right, so talking about the buttons specifically, the clicks are, this is mainly because of the um, their updated click design. They did change the click design a little bit. They are very chunky feeling in a way. Um, not really in a bad way in my opinion. They are just a little bit heavy and they have no, the heaviness mixed with no pre-travel um, and a little bit of post-travel that is on purpose, I believe, to soften out the bottom mount. Does just make them feel a little bit odd at first, but you get used to them. And there is no, like, side issues or anything like that on any of mine, side buttons, main buttons, nothing. But there have been a few I have seen, um, but that is mainly because it's batch one. And, yeah, so... Getting into the side buttons, in my opinion, these are as close to perfect side buttons as you can get. There is no post or pre-travel. They have no wobble. They're super crispy. Uh, they light, crispy, like perfect side buttons, in my opinion. They're in a nice place. They're not too small. They're, they're really nice. Scroll wheel. The scroll wheel itself, the scroll, feels very similar, I believe, to the Viper Ultimate. It might actually be identical. Uh, but I, it might be a little bit lighter in scroll. Um, I'm not sure, but it is very similar. But the scroll click, way lighter, way lighter. Very, very, very light scroll click. And some people might like that. Um, I don't mind it. It doesn't. You, I, I don't think it's light enough to accidentally click it. But once you do click it, it is very light. Um, and... I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna focus. There's a right next to the sensor right here. There's a power DPI button. Hold it for three seconds. It turns on, turns off. Um, click it. It goes through your DPIs, and there's an indicator right here on the top. Getting into the coding, um, it is a PBT-ish coding. Um, there's obviously no grips on the side, and there's no right side buttons, which we'll also talk about, and. Going back to that, there is no place to hold the dongle, so that is a very annoying thing, but is it make or break? Not really, but it is very annoying, um, so you're going to have to find somewhere to store the dongle, and the feet, they are rounded compared to the Viper Ultimate. Uh, I wish what they did is just made this one big foot, but it doesn't matter. You don't feel it when you press down or anything. They are very, very smooth feet. Um... I don't think they're the fastest feet out there, 
but they're very good stock feet. If you want something super fast, you can change them, but you don't need to. You don't need to change them really, um, especially for the average person. Just to keep them on there. Uh, sensor performance, obviously, it's perfect. Um, top, top, top end sensor, probably the best sensor on the market right now. Razer exclusive sensor, 30k DPI. I feel like mentioning the DPI is just so useless now, but yeah. Um, obviously, no RGB. It is just a printed logo like the Orochi. And yeah, so now we're going to talk about the price. So $150. I want to talk about this for a second. So no dock as well. Um, we will get into that when we talk about the weight. So $150. The reason it's $150, and they've said this multiple times, they wanted to get it to $130, which they will, it will, it will undoubtedly probably go on sale a lot for $130 in the future. Um, but people, I don't know why people don't understand this. They've said this so many times. Prices now to make a Viper are more expensive than they were then. Like, the, they have, okay, so when you make a mouse, there there are contracts in place for the prices. People will say, oh, well, you can make the Viper Ultimate for 80 Yeah, that's because they have set prices for the materials to make the Viper Ultimate that they came out with, when that they negotiated when they came out with the mouse. When you make a new mouse, you have new contracts to negotiate, so things are going to be more expensive. The prices are set. So, what, so the materials that they get for the Viper Ultimate, those are set prices. When you make a new mouse, you it, the prices will jump. And also... Razer uh, to make a sensor exclusive to yourself is a very expensive thing. It's not just something you add in there and it'd be, oh, it just adds in there. It is an expensive process. And also, Gen 3 switches, the whole internals are completely different. Um, if you can justify the super light at $160 on Logitech's website, um, you can justify this. And yet, $150 is a lot for a mouse no mouse should be $150 none of them um, which I've said so many times in the past but when you look at the context of how they're priced not how they should be priced it's not anything you need to complain about and especially with the dock this is a pure performance mouse this is not a feature packed mouse that's not what this is supposed to be and everybody knew that everybody knew that there was no RGB on this mouse there was no dock Everybody knew that. Literally everybody knew that. But once it comes out, people want to complain. And I, I find it so funny. People complain about how oh, they want better side buttons. But then they complain that they got rid of the left-handed side buttons. What, the reason the side buttons were so in is, yes, one, because of the grip. But two, because when you, okay, when you make an ambidextrous mouse, um, it's very annoying for any side button user to have just side buttons protruding so they made them where it wouldn't interfere with any hand I, I mean do you want the side buttons to go back to being slim or or what it also adds grams when it's a pure performance mouse um same thing with the dock i don't know if people remember this when the dock came out everybody comp like everybody just thought it was a gimmick the pin people were complaining about how the pins weren't it wasn't fitting the mouse correctly it, it was a gimmick because you can't use it while you're playing the game. And you don't ever have to charge the mouse because the battery life is so good. This thing has 80 hours of battery life. You never have to charge it. That's 10 more than the Super Light, for example. When do you ever charge the Super Light? So to complain about the dock, when it adds 5 to 7 grams, or th it's 3 to 5 or 5 to 7, something like that, is just stupid especially if it's when you know it's a pure performance mouse you're not paying for yes you are paying for less features but that is the point of the mouse you're exchanging features for performance if you if you want to buy a viper ultimate nobody is stopping you if you want the dock and stuff like that but you're paying for more performance for less features the viper ultimate is less performance more features um so take your pick like i do you want the lower weight or not? Like, I, I it, it's so confusing why people don't really understand this. I, I, I'm not getting it really. Um, but yeah, I mean, getting off that topic, comparing it to mice like the Super Light and the Starlight, I, I would, without a doubt, say if you like something like the Viper, like the Viper shape, this is the best mouse on the market. There is nothing that competes for performance wise. 
um, wirelessly, nothing. There's nothing in a 100-meter range, really, that competes with it performance-wise. Um, and just button and quality-wise, it's so much better than the Superlight and uh the super light and starlight i mean quality wise how it feels the super light and viper v2 pro are feel so much better than the starlight quality wise and button wise i think the buttons specifically the side buttons and the scroll wheel feel so much better than the starlight and the super light i mean the super light has notoriously bad side buttons the starlight has notoriously bad scroll wheels and click issues um i, I don't see a world where like this is the best mouse on the market in my opinion just in general um everything about it from the clicks to the side buttons to the stock feet to yeah the weight is a little bit higher than the starlight it's also a way, it's also a way bigger mouse um so it doesn't feel it does feel heavier but not not by that much um especially because of the size and i mean this kind of ruined starlights for me i mean until they release something that's like 20 grams or i'm buying it for review i don't see myself ever really being interested in a starlight again um and hopefully logitech releases a super light mini or something like that that would really be a good counter to the viper ultimate especially because everybody's been asking for a viper mini uh wireless so i mean that's gonna be the end of this video um and I kind of went on a little bit of a rant at the end, but that's the end of this video. Peace.